Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. This is my family favorite recipe for porchetta. Porchetta is one of the most sacred recipes to make on a barbecue. It is an art form and in Italy, people go absolutely crazy for it. Let me tell you that these are some of the best things you can get. But porchetta shouldn't be an art form. Porchetta shouldn't be something you have to go crazy on because porchetta can be something you eat very frequently because it's affordable and you can make it at home on your barbecue and it will be absolutely delicious. With the recipe that I've been making for years for my own family and which they love so much. This is my first hack. This is an ordinary pork belly. And that's the secret to getting started and making a homemade family style porchetta. And traditionally, of course, if you want to make a porchetta, you would have a pork belly with the loin attached or even a whole pig as a porchetta. Of course, you can do that if you want to. But I'm trying to make this as easy and as affordable as possible for you. The second hack is this. This is my vegetable garden. Well, it's not really vegetables, is it? This is um, my spice garden. Well, it's not really my spice garden. I just put some plants in the soil that I got from the supermarket. And as you can see, if I give them water every other day, they will grow. You eat it straight away, it's gone. It's, it's, I think it's around three years or something like that. But if you put it in the ground like this, this is just a basket with some soil in it. Feed it a little bit of water and a little bit of poco. Like for yeah, it's, it's like manure, but it looks really weird. Crystal meth for plants. Yeah, Very man. Gosh. Whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> and the good thing is they will start tasting way better. For instance, this is store-bought time and this is homegrown time. Can you tell the difference? Which one do you think is better? For instance, if I want like a few sage leaves, I just take the top and then I break it off right here. I don't go all the way down and break off the whole stem. I just do this, pop. And now these two will continue to grow and become more and more. And in the meantime, I'll be eating this. And that's how you get free spices. So I'll be using that. That's my second hack. <sighs> Somebody should be paying me. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I got one more hack, which I'll show you later on in this video because we got to get this ready first. So I'll pluck about 15 grams of fresh thyme, take off the leaves and chop them fine. I will do the same for around 15 grams of rosemary, take the zest of three lemons, and then it's time to focus back on the meat. So we're looking for three key features on our pork belly if we want to get it right for paqueta. We want, of course, that skin that we're going to crispen up later on. The second part that you want to see is you want to see sufficient amount of meat on your pork belly. And that is very important. So you have to have a lean pork belly. Now we have to do the preparation part. The first thing that we're going to do is focus on the skin. The skin is not going to get crunchy by itself. We have to work it. We have to make it perfect for it to crispen up. Ideal circumstances. And that's when we introduce the squeaky machine. This is a jacket. It's a tenderizer, a mechanical tenderizer. And as you can see, it has many little knives. Now, if you don't have one of these, you should really pick it up because it's super cheap. And if you have a bad steak, you can tenderize it, make everything better. Well, just get one, you need one. Of course, the link's down below in the video description. You can find it. Or if you're going to the recipe on our website, the link's there as well. If you don't have a machine like that, of course, you can still use your knife. Just tap it on the skin so you can have little holes in them. Now this is coming in handy because I'm just gonna... I'm going to make lots of tiny holes in the skin. So I want to make sure and I check that I have them everywhere and as you can see they're not everywhere in the same amount. So I'm just gonna continue until I get it absolutely freaking perfect. Now we got to work on flavor. I want to maximize the surface of the meat so we can add as much flavor to it as we possibly can. So I'm gonna take my forged knife and I'm going to slice it open. This technique is called butterflying and it's a really good technique to put flavor anywhere you would otherwise not be able to get the flavor in. 
First I'm gonna sprinkle on the thyme, the rosemary and the lemon zest. Then I'm going to sprinkle on the most important part of flavoring the porchetta, which is fennel. Fennel is going to give it a specific porchetta flavor, followed by two teaspoons of fresh ground pepper and two teaspoons of table salt. I'm going to fold the pork belly closed and put on the same amount of seasoning as I put in the center of it. And now it's time to roll it up and you have two choices. Either you're going to roll it up to make it as thick as possible, but well, that's going to make the cooking time longer, or you're going to roll it up and make it smaller and lengthier. And since I'm gonna show you the easy way so you can make this at home for your family, we're going to do this lengthwise, making the skin as long as possible and therefore the fastest to cook. And then with the opening down, you're going to take a little bit of butcher swine and tie it up. If you are able to tie your shoes, you will be able to tie up a pork belly. Put the rope underneath, make the knot, and then instead of doing one turn, just do two turns. There we go. Go around, do the same thing. Nothing difficult here, just like tying up your shoelaces. For good looks, I'm going to rotate that knot all the way to the back so mine will just look pretty. I'm going to tie it up using six twines of butcher's rope. And then it looks like this, absolutely beautiful. And to make sure that you will not be able to fill this recipe, we've written it down step by step, easy follow to instructions on our website, pitmasterx.com, the link's down below. Now you can just slide this in an oven tray straight into the oven, but do your oven thing. But there's a better way to make this and it's more fun. And therefore you're going to need this. This is my rotisserie skewer. And all you need to do is take this, stick it in and just slide it through the center, which will be easy to do. Support it a little bit. Be careful with your fingers and the pins. Secure the other side. And once it's secure, it can go on the barbecue. I'll be cooking on the Napoleon Prestige Pro 500. And this thing is a beast, especially when you're cooking porchetta because it has the porchetta cooking feature. That is this back burner. The back burner is an infrared burner. The plate in front of it will heat up and generate infrared heat creating a crispy skin on the outside of your pork. First step is to place in the rotisserie, then turn on the gas off the back burner and hit the ignition button. Now I'm going to let this slowly rotate with the lid closed and the barbecue is going to be running at a temperature of around 180 degrees Celsius. I'm going to check every 10 minutes or so to see how the skin is doing. Is it drying up nicely? Is the fat rendering off? And are we getting the pops? 10 minutes have gone by and it's time to check. This is going so fast. We're rendering down the fat. You can see it bubbling up on the sides. The skin is starting to dry out, render out all of its fat. And then it's going to be very crispy, but that's later on. Now we have to keep our eye on the second thing that is important when making porchetta. It's not only the skin, you also have to cook the meat properly. And how do you know you cooked it properly? I can give you a time that you have to cook the meat, let's say four hours, but if you have a bigger or thicker cut of pork belly, it's going to be longer, or you might be cooking on a lower temperature. It's going to be totally different. That's why I always stick in a thermometer. Now this is my solution measuring temperatures while on a rotisserie. Just imagine having a thermometer with a wire. That will be a big no-no when cooking with rotisseries. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be so tasty. I'll eat one half and you eat the other half. This is gonna be so good. Okay, okay, one bite for Eva. Eva always, if we, even if you don't see it, Eva always gets a bite. It's like death and taxes and feeding Eva is a certain thing here. And of course, I'm gonna set the temperature and this is going to be the belly. I'm not going to go for 95, I'm going to go for 92 degrees Celsius. But look here, medium is cooked at 62, 64. So that means then it's already done. But if we aim for that, we're gonna have absolute perfection. And now what we need to do is close the lid and let the barbecue do its job. An hour has gone by and we have this to show for it. <laughs> look at that beautiful crispy skin. The thermometer is telling me that the core temperature of the meat is now 64 degrees Celsius, which means it's cooked and you could actually eat this as it is right now. 
But as I told you, the paqueta consists of two things, cooking the pork and getting the skin absolutely perfect. Now, we know that it's cooked, we can go all the way up from 64 to 92, and 92 is almost fall apart tender, but now we have to check to see if the skin's done. And we can see that it's popping up right there, and it has to bubble up all the way. So all through that skin, it has to be crispy. And the way to check that is with your knife. And if it feels hard, then it's properly cooked. We're not there yet. We're going to lower the temperature right now. So I'm going to put the burner on a low setting. I'm going to give this some time so that that skin can start rendering down even more but we're not cooking that fast anymore and we don't burn the outside. But keep in mind, we're only at one hour of cooking time where a normal paqueta would take at least five to six hours, maybe even up to eight hours or an overnight cook to get it absolutely perfect. So we're gonna give this a little bit more time, let it go a little slower, take our time, and then we'll check back in a little bit. Porqueta reached the core temperature of 92 degrees Celsius, which means it's been cooked on the inside fully, but now it's time to take a look at the crust. It sounds the same as before, but if I tap it, will it puncture? Oh, like that. And that's how I know if my porqueta will be done. The skin should be super, super light, and if you bite into it, it should just be crunchy and disappear instantly. Perfect. There we have it. The end result. The moment is here. The proof is in eating the pudding. Boy, yo, yo. Look at that. Beautiful pork. That is what I want to hear if I made porchetta. I want to hear that crunch. I want the skin to break. And I want you to see right there that the skin is built up out of multiple layers. So you can see that this is the outer layer. This is the inner layer and every bit of it should have been turned soft. Now there's only one thing left to do. Maybe I should have let it rest. Let it rest. Don't, if you're letting it rest, don't cover it up with some kind of foil or something like that. You want the skin to be crispy still. So if you let it rest, just let it lay on the board with the skin side up and it will rest inside the skin and still be crispy on the outside. Mm. Oh. Just make this recipe. And you understand what I mean by angels are peeing on your mouth, on your tongue. Go to our website, pitmasterx.com. If you see, you know what to do. That's it. Thank you guys for watching.